Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Music and Beyond. I'm Ernie Crazy Eyes. Today I have Aria from the other LA, an amazing rock band from Louisiana, I believe. Originally from Louisiana, but we now live in Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, okay. Hell yeah. I heard, I, I feel like, I feel, honestly, I feel like Tennessee is like the other, other LA. Because yes, I, kind of. Oh, and I also have my bandmates with me, too, so I'm not alone. <laughs> oh, okay, hell yeah. That's awesome. What's up, guys? What's going on? Oh. You got Zach and Mac here. Yeah, Zach and Mac. Zach right. and Mac. <laughs> <laughs> it slips right, right off the tongue. Slack and, right. yeah. Zach and Mac. Oh. So I want to I wanna start from the very beginning, you know, uh, cuz I love I love to hear the origin story of like every band that I that I interview. So, can you share a story behind the formation of the other LA and how did the band come together in Louisiana and where are where and what were some of the initial challenges you guys faced? So, we started as a cover band um, when I was in high school back in 2014, but we decided to actually write original music and about five months in the band, we wrote our first song and we played with uh, Lacuna Coil and Sick Puppies actually during our first year as a band. And I'd say it's, uh, this journey has been doing really well. Right now we're in the process of blending genres together, not just being hard rock, but like having different elements as well. Do you have a I, – I was, I was going to ask you about that because uh, there is a song in, the, in y'all's, uh, y'all's uh, discography that's kind of like techno, techno, techno-ish, right? Uh, yes, cut, like... Wild Animal, yeah, that's it. Wait, what's it called? Oh, yeah, Wild, Wild Animal. Yeah, that Wild was Animal. so good, honestly. I, I really enjoyed that. Thank Thanks, you. I, I literally had to go back and check to see if I was listening to the right band still. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's funny for me, like, I like how, that every song sounds different because you want to, like, not sound like every song sounds the same because I've been to shows where... We see bands and all their songs sound the same. It's just like one big song, and you don't, you can't even tell like that they're different songs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, I see what you're saying. And uh, the other song that I wanted to, that to me it sounded kind of different was a. Uh, I'm not sure if this was your song or if you guys were just featured in it. It was a uh, in in my dreams. Oh, that's our. That's uh, that was. So that was one of the first songs we ever wrote as a band, and it won us the Revol- Revolver's Hottest Chicks on Hard Rock uh, tour. We got to open up, and that was the show Ari was talking about with uh, Lacuna Coil, Sick Puppies, uh, a couple other bands. So that kind of started our career. So. Damn, that's crazy. And that's that's an amazing song, honestly. Uh, pretty much everything that you guys played is going on my playlist, and I uh, I really hope everybody else checks you guys out because you guys play a lot of amazing music. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, what musical influences have shaped your sound? Are there any particular bands or artists that inspired you to when you guys first started? When we first started? Yeah, we, I think you should say. Yeah, so, like, when we first started, we were – uh, we were very young. We were still in high school. So you got my uh, pop punk, post hardcore influence. And Aria was really big into uh, rock, such as Breaking Benjamin, Three Days Grace, and, you know, a couple of those emo bands, you know. Uh, and over the past, you know, couple of years, you know, we eventually, you know, grew into uh, a more mature sound. Uh, and so the bands we started listening to uh, it, it were, were a bit different. So Aria. Uh, gotten into the whole uh, goth side of things. Emo uh, means dead. <laughs> and uh, and I, I I just got into uh, harder music, you know, harder metalcore. Uh, and then we eventually brought in our drummer uh, Zach right here, Which, who, who can play anything, mind you. And he's a oh, he's hey. a pop punk genius, and uh, he's better than uh, Travis Barker, by the way. So. Whoa, that's no, you are. <laughs> I don't know about all that. But <laughs> thank you. <laughs> 
That's wild. And uh, uh, can can you walk us through your songwriting process? How do you guys collaborate as a band? And... So the guys write the music, and they basically hand it over to me because I can't really write lyrics if there's no music. That just does not click with me. I have to listen to the song to see what the mood is, what the tone is. Does it sound melancholy? Does it sound angry and all that? So I'm last, you know? <laughs> yeah. and, and what was the process? What was the process like for the new single, Defiant? Uh, Defiant? Uh, who did, who did, how did we? Oh, with Nate. With Nate Perry. Uh, yeah. You guys wrote the music. Yeah, so uh, we, we wrote with a uh, friend over here in Nashville. His name's Nate Perry. Uh, and he's done a lot of work with, like, some of the Saliva guys and a couple other guys. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so one night during the pandemic, uh, we went over to his house, and we just started writing the music to it and then uh, eventually wrote some lyrics. And then we gave it to our producer, uh, Mitch Marlowe, uh, who's done uh, In This Moment. Uh, God, I can't even begin New the, Year's New Day. New Year's Day, yeah. So we gave it to him, and he turned it into this masterpiece. And then it was mastered by... Um, Kyle O'Dell, he used to play in a band called uh, Failure Anthem, and he does a lot of a lot for uh, uh, bands to get on, you know, Sirius XM, uh, Octane, and all that. So, dang, that's that's wild, man. And uh, all those bands that you're mentioning, I'm like, holy crap, I love those bands. <laughs> so, I I think there's a connection on why I love your y'all's band. Thank you so much. Yeah. And uh. What what is the inspiration behind your new single Defiant? Can you delve into the theme and the message you guys wanted to convey through the song? Well, it was funny when I wrote Defiant, I was listening to a lot of like UK punk, like Sex Pistols, early Susie and the Banshees, like early post punk. So I guess this song is basically about not caring about what anybody thinks and just actually being yourself, stop following trends that are on social media and actually have a mind for yourself and don't be afraid to speak your truth. That is freaking amazing. I love that. And and honestly that that kind of that kind of brings me to this other question which is, you know, like I'm not broken cuz when I heard that song I was in my head I'm thinking where were you where was this song when when I was in high school or in middle school like it literally it literally brought me back to to those moments honestly thank you so much so what's uh can you talk to me about i'm not broken oh so um i'm not broken so um we wrote that song with a guy up here in nashville his name's Blair daly and uh he's also one of those uh He's worked with a lot of heavy hitters uh, in the industry. Uh, he's done, like, Leonard Skinner, Hail Storm. Uh, he's been nominated for a Grammy. So, uh, yeah, we wrote that song with him one day, uh, right at, like, six years ago. Uh, we took it to a buddy in um, our hometown, Lafayette, Louisiana, uh, you know, just to get a, a, a somewhat of a good production on it. And we, uh, a couple years ago, we went to Los Angeles, and that's how we uh, discovered our producer, uh, Mitch Marlowe, who ended up, you know, doing the final master of the song. Uh, so, yeah, we flew out to L.A., did three songs with him, uh, including I'm Not Broken. And then, yeah, two, three years later, got on Sirius XM Octane, and it has done very, very well for us. So, And I know, like, I'm a, hu- I'm a huge lyricist, so Aria, like, can you talk to me about the lyrics? Because when I listened to it, I was just, you know, blown away. And um, I guess it's part of, you know, just loving lyrics in general. Well, it has a similar message to Defiant. It's basically, basically, um, even though like life can get very difficult at times, you got to remember that you're still standing, you know, and you can't be broken. Hell yeah! And uh, I know you guys were. I know you guys talked about recording and stuff. And what, what was the recording process like? You know, with with any song or just Defiant in general. Because, like, you know, I've seen a lot of, I've seen a few bands, you know, record record a few songs, and I've always seen, you know, like, oh, there's a problem here, there's a problem here, or, you know. But did you guys encounter any unique experiences or challenges in the studio while working on, 
on Defiant? Actually, no. Defiant was probably one of the easiest songs that we recorded. Um, I was basically, I basically came up with a really cool guitar part for Defiant. So I am involved in some of the musical influences well before I write lyrics. Like, I'll have like, a cool, like, guitar in my head, and I'll, like, tell the guys to play it, and they'll play a cool riff. And, like I said, I'm last when it comes to writing lyrics. So Defiant was actually a fairly easy song to write. We basically wrote it in two days. Two days? Dang. I love that. That's awesome. It takes me like a year to come up with like one verse whenever I'm trying to write poetry. But sometimes it's good to have like a lot of time because maybe um, you have a different experience or you basically want to live more before you start writing like a whole song, you know? You want to have like more experience, you know? Yeah, it makes sense. And... How has how has your sound evolved since the formation of the band? Are there any significant changes or developments in your music that you would like to highlight? Oh, absolutely. So when I turned 20, I basically just kind of grew out of, like, emo music and everything, and I really started listening to, like, 80s alternative and post-punk. One of my favorite bands is, like, The Cure, Susie and the Banshees, Bauhaus, Joy Division. I love, like, bass-driven songs. And I also, I've been listening to this new band called She Passed Away. They're based out of Turkey. They have really cool synths in their music, and I kind of like having that in our music as well. We have we have some other new songs that kind of have that influence, and I'm really, really excited to release that this year as well. That's a really crazy crazy band name she passed away yes they're really really good i highly recommend you check them out i i literally just added i just followed them on apple music so so i don't forget and uh is there is there any time where we will get new music this year or is it just kind of in the air oh yeah so um we plan on uh doing a lot more uh releases this year Uh, i think we got another song coming out next month uh, and then another song maybe is a month after that. And we're going to try to at least put out, uh, what do you say, Zach, like three more? Yeah, I think for the year. Yeah. Um, and uh, they're really good songs, by the way. So. And, has, uh, and I know you guys said you guys live in Tennessee now. Um, so has Tennessee, you know, influenced your music differently, journey-wise? Um, I can say so as well. Uh, not necessarily from like a culture uh, point of view. Um, I, I guess just with uh, the different types of people we've been surrounded by because it's just one big melting pot. Um, and I think that right there has uh, influenced our music, uh, the different types of members we've had come and go. Um, so, yeah, I, I would definitely say so. And what what can the fans expect from a live performance by the other LA? How do you guys prepare for your shows? And are there any memorable performances that stand out to you guys? I guess for me, like how to prepare, how I prepare, I basically have to be alone for like 45 minutes just to get ready because it takes me a very long time for me to get ready because hello, I'm a woman. So it takes me a while. <laughs> um, And I would say memorable performances what what's your favorite zach hmm. favorite show with the other la that you're always gonna remember oh man probably blue ridge blue ridge rock fest yeah, yeah. That was, oh that was nice incredible. yeah it was hot yeah. but it was it was really fun hot and steamy yeah. oh yeah as far as our performance goes we just we try to bring it every show you know really just make it as energetic and as fun as possible we basically let the music do the talking that's right yeah 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 any any possibilities that we might see you guys here in Texas? Yeah, I think so. Pro- probably at the towards towards the end of this year, we got um we got a couple of dates with uh, Scotty Austin, uh, singer from Saving Abel, and then oh, okay. uh, we're going on a we're going to be playing on a cruise uh, during September, and uh, I don't know, maybe we'll throw in some southern dates towards the end of the year, maybe some Texas, Louisiana dates for uh, our hometown fans. So. Oh, yeah, I would definitely love to see you guys if you guys come to Texas. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And with the release of Defiant, what are the plans for the future? Are there any upcoming projects, tours, or collaborations? I know we talked a little bit about 
about those, but anything else that we should know about? Um, man, I uh, just, uh, so we, we do have some things in the works, uh, we can't really, uh, talk about, um, but, uh, it's the reason why we're going to be releasing a lot more new music. Um, we might have a, a festival appearance, uh, at the end of this year, um, and definitely bigger shows. Uh, we're going to be playing a lot more bigger shows, so. And what message would you guys like to tell your fans through your music and your journey as a band? Is there anything specific that you hope the fans take from listening to you guys? I would say um, it'd be really cool to, like, meditate to our music just to get lost in the lyrics and basically hope that our music is a journey to come back to you, like to find yourself through our music. Never give up on your dreams. I'm uh, I'm almost 30 years old, having given up on my dreams, and this has been the best. Um, we've been a band 10 years now, uh, me and Aria, um, and it's been the best 10 years of my life. So, never give up. Oh yeah, and oh, uh, I I do gotta say that when I heard I'm not because I think I I feel I feel that I'm not broken is really like one of my favorite songs right now because I deal with a lot of mental health and I've tried to spread awareness through mental health and when I heard I'm not broken it just kind of you know full circle and and you know it wouldn't have happened if I wasn't listening to you guys so me talking to you guys about just music in general or talking to you guys on my podcast, it really, truly means a lot because, you know, I wouldn't have discovered you guys if it wasn't for, for this. And thank you guys for writing that music and that song in general, too. Of yeah, course. You're, you're very you. welcome, yeah. man. Yeah. Thank you. That means a lot. And uh, I like to end I like to end every every interview with, with this question. Uh if you were stuck in an elevator with any musician, dead or alive, who would it be and what would you talk about? Jimi Hendrix and Hot. Lots of Hot. For me, uh, it would be Travis Barker, and I would just talk shop so for, <laughs> for hours. So. For me, Mayor James Keenan, and I want to talk about aliens. <laughs> oh, dang. Hey, if it was a podcast, it'd probably be Joe Rogan, right? Because aliens. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Aliens. Actually, isn't there somebody in a Blink One Eighty Two? Is it Tom DeLonge? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom. It's Tom DeLonge. Yeah, yeah. That that's a pretty that's a pretty wild. Those are all pretty wild answers because uh, I don't know. <laughs> I one I've never heard uh, Arya's. Are you answer? What was what was the name again? Maynard James Keenan of Tool. Oh, of, oh, okay. I've actually never really heard the whole name all, all at once, so that kind of confused me a little bit. <laughs> oh, you're good. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. I, I, I love all those answers, Jimmy and Travis. And the Tool guy, because I'm not even gonna try to pronounce his name. <laughs> Maynard something. Uh, there you go, Maynard, yeah. Maynard Keegan. Uh, where, where can we find you guys? Well, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and Spotify and Apple Music. That's all at The Other LA. Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you all for listening. Follow them on all their social media. And remember that without music, life would be a mistake. <laughs>